Hello all, welcome to this channel CFD Baba. Here we simulate CFD cases using ANSYS Workbench Fluent. Today we are going to simulate flow over a rocket for Mach number 0.6. I would like to give a big shout out to Suleiman who suggested this simulation and provided the CAD model for it. Let's start by dragging in Fluid Flow Fluent. Right click on geometry module and import your geometry. Right click and open it in design modeler. Click on generate. Here we have the CAD model for our rocket. We need to create an enclosure around this rocket. We will assume that we are simulating this rocket in a wind tunnel. To create the enclosure, go in Tools and click on Enclosure. We will make the size of enclosure sufficiently large so that the walls of the enclosure do not affect the airflow around our rocket. I will use the dimensions as 311 and 211. Click on Generate. You can see the enclosure that has been created around the rocket. We have used a longer length in the tailing section of our rocket. This is done to better predict the flow behind the rocket in the wake region of our rocket. Now we need to boolean subtract our rocket from the domain. Go in create, click on boolean. Select the operation as subtract. Select the target body as solid. Target body is the body from which you want to delete your tool body. So tool body is the body which you want to delete from the target body. Click on generate. This will create a single body where the rocket has been deleted and the cavity of the shape of the solid rocket is left inside this domain. This domain should be of the type fluid. Close design modeler. Right click on mesh, click on edit. We are going to generate inflation layers to better capture the flow around our rocket. We can easily create inflation layers if we have the named selection of all the faces. So let's name the faces. This will be the inlet face. Select the face selection filter and click on the inlet face. Press N and name it as inlet. Select all the faces of the wind tunnel walls. Press N and name it as walls. Rotate the geometry and click on the outlet face. Press N and name it as outlet. Now we want to name the rocket as well. We will be calculating drag forces on this rocket. To select the rocket, select the mode as box select. Draw a box around the rocket. This will select all the faces of our rocket. Press N and name it as rocket. Now we have given named selection for all our boundaries. Select the mode as single select. Now we will apply inflation layers for our mesh. Go in details. We will use the default element size values, but we will add the inflation layers. Go in the inflation tab. Use the method as program controlled. Use the inflation option of first layer thickness. Define the first layer height as 2.5 mm. Define number of maximum layers as 10. Now we need to tell the program that we want to include the walls of our rocket during the mesh inflation layers. To do that, select the rocket and here you will see the option program controlled inflation. We need to include the 
faces of the rocket for inflation application. If we select include, then the faces of the rocket will be included while creating the inflation layers. Now we are ready to generate our mesh. Right click and click on generate. You can change and improve the quality of our mesh. But since this is a demonstration simulation, I will be using the default mesh values. Our mesh has now been created. To view the inflation layers, we will need to take section plane in our mesh. Click on the section planes option. Select a new section plane. Draw a line by dragging the left mouse button you will be able to see the inflation layers around the rocket walls. You can even change the location of the section plane by selecting the section plane and using edit section plane option. Now click on the face and drag with your left mouse button. Here you will be able to see the inflation layers that have been created around our rocket walls. I can turn on the show whole elements option to view the mesh layers better. This is how you can create inflation layers for any geometry if you have it in your named selection. Now let's see the section plane in YZ normal. So we will create another section plane. Cut it from the middle. Here you will be able to see the inflation layers. We can edit the location of the section plane. Here 10 inflation layers have been added around the rocket walls. These inflation layers help the software to better calculate the velocity gradients normal to the direction of our rocket walls. This is our final mesh. Switch off the section plane. We are ready to solve this mesh. Right click on mesh, click on update. You will get a message that mesh translation to fluent was successful. You can close the meshing software. Right click on setup, click on edit. We will use double precision and select the solver processes as 4. These are the number of cores in your system. 4 cores will be used for parallel computing. Click on start. Double click on models. We will use the K Omega SST turbulence model for solving this case. Next, we will select the boundary conditions. We will use Mach number of 0.6. So we need to provide the velocity of air at the inlet. So to calculate the velocity of air, we will need to use the simple formula of Mach number. So the simple formula of Mach number is equal to the speed of object divided by the speed of sound in the air. I have used the speed of sound in the air as 344 meters per second. So we are using Mach number of 0.6. Hence to calculate the velocity of object, we will have to multiply the Mach number with the speed of sound in the air. So we will get the velocity at inlet by multiplying 0.6 into 344 meters per second. That will give us value of 206.4 meters per second. We will use this value for the velocity magnitude at inlet. Press apply. Make sure the type for outlet is pressure outlet and the type for rocket and walls is wall. Next, we will change the methods. We will switch off pseudo transient. We want to calculate the drag force on our rocket. 
we can do that by going in the report definitions here we will use a new definition of force report for drag here we will name it as drag force we want to calculate drag force on the rocket we will select the output report type as drag force we want the software to print the values of the drag force on to the console click on ok make sure that the direction of the drag force is correct drag force is always calculated in the direction of the airflow the air is flowing in the positive x direction hence the drag will be calculated in the positive x direction select the drag force and click on close we will initialize the solution using standard initialization we will compute it from inlet click on initialize we will run this simulation for 150 iterations click on calculate this will plot the residual graph and the drag force plot onto the screen residual graph is nothing but the difference between the actual values and the calculated values of the software we want this difference to be as less as possible residuals of the order 10 raised to minus 3 are accepted in most of the CFD simulations as the simulation is running we can even view the value of the drag force on our rocket and we can see its actual value printed onto the console for each iteration let's wait for the simulation to get completed once the iterations have been completed you will get a calculation complete message you can see that the residuals are going in the downward direction if you observe the drag force plot you will see that the value of the drag is not changing anymore even if we run the simulation for more number of iterations hence we can say that our solution has converged since we are interested in the value of drag and the value of drag is not changing with respect to the number of iterations we can also see the value of drag from reports double click on reports open forces here we can see the value of drag for rocket select the rocket select the direction as x and click on print here you will be able to see the value of drag force in newtons it is 18.42 newtons we are not interested in calculating the lift force because the shape of the rocket is not aerodynamic to generate any lift now we will view the results right click on results and click on edit we can plot contours streamlines as well as vectors for that we need to have a plane click on location click on plane click on ok select the plane as xy plane click on apply this will create a plane at the midsection of your geometry let's try to plot the contour on this plane click on contour click on ok select the variable as velocity select the range as local set the number of contours to 110 we want the contour to be plotted on the plane 1 select the locations as plane 1 click on apply here you will be able to see the contour around our rocket to better view the contour switch off the lighting click on apply switch off plane 1 now you will be able to view the velocity contour around our rocket you can see that there is low velocity region just behind the rocket this is because air tries to stick to the back surface of the rocket and it gets pulled along with the rocket 
This creates recirculation zone behind the rocket which decreases the velocity just behind the rocket. We can even view the vectors. Click on the vectors button. Click on OK. Select the location as plane 1. Click on apply. Here you can see that the vectors have been plotted but the size of the vectors needs to be changed. Go to symbol and select the size of 0 0.05. Click on apply. Here you can see clearly how the vectors are being plotted around the walls of our rocket. Here you can see the recirculation zone I was talking about. This recirculation zone is responsible for low velocity behind the rocket. We can even plot the streamlines. Click on the streamline button. Click on OK. Select the location as plane 1. Select the sampling as vertex. Select the max number of points as 500. Set the direction to forward and backward. Click on apply. Switch off the vectors. You can clearly see the recirculation zone again with the streamlines. This recirculation zone is also known as eddies or vortex generation. This is how the streamlines look around the rocket walls. This is how we can simulate flow around the rocket by adding inflation layers. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel and also share this video with all your fellow CFD colleagues. We will meet again in a new video with a new simulation. Goodbye till then.